Hi there, I'm very excited to tell you about my new project for the Anglo Concertina. Uh, the problem I've had as a teacher over the last few years is that I have two concertinas. I've got a GD and I've got a CG and the majority of my customers for my tutorials have a CG but quite a few have GD and there's probably a few people out there have got B flat F. How do I cope with the demands of all those different keys? Well, I've come up with a tablature for the concertina. Generally, I teach using a musical notation, which is fine, but I've come up with this tablature, which is a kind of a generic tab for all concertinas. The exciting and different thing about this is that I can record one Anglo concertina tutorial for each tune and simply re-pitch the playing part of that lesson uh, so that it's right for your concertina. So all you need to do is tell me which tuning you have, if you've got a GD or a CG or an, even a B flat F, and then I can send you the correct tutorial in your key. Uh, my speech will not be affected by this because I won't re-pitch my talking and the timing of the playing will be exactly the same. So it's great, isn't it? I'm gonna give you a free tutorial today on the tune Danny Boy, which is just a simple single note melody and I'm going to show you my new tablature as I do so. My tablature doesn't mention any note names, only buttons and the rows and the fingers and the bellows direction, so it will be a kind of a one size fits all. Obviously there will be purists out there who insist on having musical notation and I'm sorry but I won't be doing any more of those type of tutorials because uh, it's just so time consuming having to do one, two, maybe three tutorials for each tune. So I'm sorry about that, but uh, hopefully you'll really enjoy using my tablature and I think it makes a lot of sense. The great thing about this, of course, is that you'll be able to hot swap from one concertina to another. So if you own a GD and a CG, uh, you'll be able to play the tune on both those instruments. Where there are problems with uh, different layouts like Wheatstone versus Jeffries, I will always say that in the tutorial. I mean, my concertinas are all Jeffries layout, but where there's a, a Wheatstone layout issue, I will mention it in the tutorial and I'll provide you uh, with the tablature as long as you tell me that you have that kind of layout. Also, I know there's a lot of people out there that are terrified of reading music or don't understand it or just don't want to be bothered with it. And I fully understand that. I mean, musical notation does give you a whole load of information everything you could possibly need to know for playing a tune, but I, I do get that some people just don't want to be bothered with that. So with this tablature, you won't need to worry about musical notation whatsoever. We're still going to be musical with this. We're still going to play with expression and we're going to play in time. But as I say, you won't have to worry about the theory of music at all. Obviously, you're going to need to use the video tutorials uh, alongside reading the tab. They'll go kind of hand in glove and what you can't pick up off the tab you'll pick up off the tutorial. So I will show you and you'll be able to listen and watch and pick it all up from there. I think it's you know a really good way of doing it. You'll also receive an instructional document with your first purchase. So when you buy your first lesson in this style, I'll send you this uh, document which goes into real detail how to understand my new tablature. So you won't have any problems at all. And of course, if you do, you can always contact me and I can help you. So like I say, I'm going to be teaching you Danny Boy today, uh, or London Derry Air, you might know it as that. And like I say, it's just a single note melody line, but it's a great way to find our way around this new tablature. So only single notes today, but my tab can cope with harmonies and chords. And in fact, the last few days I've been working on a few tunes that I haven't taught yet on the internet, using those very things, even uh, triplet quavers. Just in case you're interested, this tablature is based on one that I invented for the English concertina when I first started playing that instrument back in 2015. So uh, I've kind of adapted it and really worked hard at making it work well for the Anglo concertina. So it's all very exciting. I can't wait to get started. So let's do just that. At the top of the first page of each gym that I teach in this way, I will write down the various keys that you could be playing in uh, depending upon which Anglo concertina you own. So this is an Anglo concertina. I'm not going to tell you which key it's in because that, that's going to be immaterial because of uh, the fact that I'm going to re-pitch this tutorial for various instruments. I was talking only about Jeffries and Wheatstone layouts. Problems occur in tunes with different layouts, mainly on these five buttons here. That's the five buttons on the accidental row uh, on the right-hand side. They are different for Jeffries and Wheatstone. I will 
obviously help you with that as we go but in this tune we don't play the accidental row at all and also at the top of the first page of every tune I'll let you know whether you can play that tune on a 20 button two row or whether you need a three row like this instrument. If you have more buttons on your concertina like you know a 38 button you'll still be able to play this but of course you won't use those extra buttons and who knows I may get into doing tablatures for those type of instruments as well. So here is the tablature and let's get our bearings shall we? So as you hold your instrument, the vertical row nearest to you, that's this row here, assuming you've got a three row instrument, the row nearest to you here, I'm calling row number one, okay? And if you've got a, a CG instrument, that's the G row. If you've got a GD instrument, that's the D row. Okay, so that's row one, both sides, okay, nearest to you. Then I go to my middle row, I'm calling that row two. But of course, if you've got a 20 button instrument, you've only got these two rows, rows one and two, as I'm calling them. And the row furthest away from me, the player, I'm calling that by its proper name, the accidental row. We call it that because it has a, a whole bunch of accidental notes that you don't find in the keys of the two main rows, plus a few extra uh, notes as well. Row one, nearest to you. Row two, next one furthest away. And the one furthest away from you is the accidental row. Notice I'm not talking about keys here, and I'm not talking about notes, I'm simply talking about rows, and I will be talking about button numbers in a moment. At the top of the page, you can see the button numbers across the top there. You've got one, two, three, four, five on the left-hand side, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the right-hand side. So if you want to orientate yourself, just pull the bellows out and just curve them up don't go too mad otherwise you'll damage your instrument so the way i'm looking at my two ends now with the buttons facing up is the way that i'm looking at my tablature so coming across here on the left hand side i've got buttons one two three four five and on the right hand side six seven eight nine ten you see so reading across the top of the page we have the button numbers one to five on the left hand side six to ten on the right hand side and that's the same for all three rows. Now there are other methods of numbering the buttons. Some people go one to 10 round here and one to 10 round here, and then they call this one to five on the accidentals. I mean, that's fine, but this is the way I do it. It makes more sense to me, and I'm sure everyone's got their own pet method of doing tablature. This is mine, and if you stick with it, I'm sure you're gonna find it absolutely fine. I have a, a lady student who's also a good friend of mine and I've been working closely with her as I've been developing this, making sure that it's kind of student friendly. She's been finding bits that you know I might have missed and so we've collaborated on this together. So thank you Kathy for that. Give her a bit of a name check there because she's worked really hard on this with me. So there we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all three rows. And those are your button numbers. Now on the far left hand side of the page you can see the bar numbers. So this bar here is bar naught. It's got three little notes in it, and I'll explain how to read those in a moment. It's not the first complete bar. The first complete bar is here, uh, bar number one. So bar naught is a pickup bar, just with a few notes to lead us into the main tune. So you read the bar numbers, if I just go down the page here, naught, one, two, and you can see that at the top of the page here, my button numbers and my left and right are staying put. In other words, they are frozen. Scroll down, you still see your button numbers at the top, which is quite useful. If you've got a PDF of it, of course, that won't happen. So bar 0, bar 1, bar 2. So those are the bar numbers. And then you've got the counting, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and on the side there, and you read that downwards like you read the bar numbers. Downwards is the key word here. Okay, just bear that in mind before we actually get to the meat and potatoes of this. Over here you can see the keys. So if you're playing a C, G instrument, this will be in the key of G major. If you're playing a G, D instrument, this will be in the key of D major. Counting in fours. So basically where I've got a little bit of spare real estate like I have over here on the right and here as well, I use that to give you a bit of extra information in text. You've got a thick line and a thin line and two dots here. That's my version of a repeat sign but kind of turned on its side. Just to say that the vertical depth of a bar depends on how many notes there are in it. So 
This bar here, bar number one, has got quite a lot of notes. And this bar here, bar 18, see it's not very deep because there's only a couple of notes in it. But remember, all bars had the same amount of beats in them. They had the same value. So in other words, they all last the same amount of time. So don't be fooled by the actual depth of the bar. Obviously, that's commensurate with how many notes there are in the bar. And if you want to get your bearings timing-wise, look at where the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 fall. Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. They can't move. So that's kind of your guide as to the timing. So when we've got notes that don't fall on those on beats, we use the word and. Uh, we sometimes use a word uh, but I don't think we need to on this first bit. So you count one, two, three, and four, and, and you come in on these three notes here as you count and four, and. But this will make much more sense when I actually get playing. So there's so much chat in this, but I just want to explain all this properly before I get going. You can see the name of the tune at the top here, Danny Boy, Anglo Concertina, and it says 20 or 30 buttons. So it means you can play this whether you've got a two row or a three row. So a lot of people, when they start off, they buy a two row, sort of a cheap instrument from Germany or China, and you'll be able to play this tune on that instrument because it actually only uses uh, rows one and two. It doesn't need the accidental row. So if it says 30 button only at the top here, you know that you're in trouble if you've got the 20 button instrument. This word bellows just means that this section here, this kind of blank set of cells here, is representing the bellows between the left and the right side of the instrument. So let's get to the actual notes now. So if you look in the main part of the page underneath the words left and right, you'll see some numbers in cells. Now the contents of each cell, in other words this number, it actually gives you four bits of information. First of all, it tells you which button you should play, because if you look up, this cell here is in button two column, so you know it's on button two on the left hand side, but it doesn't tell you which row, does it? So how do we know what row this note is on? Well, in this tune, most of the notes are on row number one. So when you see a number written in a cell, just a single number, don't worry about that minus sign for a moment, you know it's going to be on the row number one, the row nearest to you. Okay, that minus sign means you're going to play that note on the pull, and you'll hear that in a moment. So these first three notes are all found on row number one. If the note is found on row number two in this particular piece, you'll see a box around it, uh, like this one. This one is filling up two spaces because it's going to last for uh, beat number two and half of beat number three. So I merge cells to extend the sustain length of a note. But this two has got a thick black box around it, so you know it's going to be found on the row number two. That's the row that's least used in this tune. If there were any notes on the accidental row, you'd see a little A next to those, but in this tune there aren't any, okay? Right, let's go back up to this first section up here. So we know the button we're going to play, button two here, button three here, this would be button four, this would be button five, you see? Coming up, one, two, three, four, five, and we know that all these notes are on row number one, apart from this one here. And obviously, the number itself is the actual finger you're gonna use. So you know you're gonna use your little finger, fourth finger, on this first note. So it's gonna be little finger on button number two, on row number one. And the minus sign is telling us that we're going to play that note on the pull. We're going to press the button and pull out. And if a number doesn't have that minus sign, you know you're going to play the note, press the button and push in. So minus means pull, pull the bellows out. So quite a bit of information there, isn't there? It's very important to remember that these numbers are the actual finger that you're going to use on that note. Now that may vary from time to time because we've got five buttons on each side in each row but only four fingers so very often we have to kind of reset our fingers so you know finger one won't always be used on button five it might be used on button four sometimes on this side and on this side finger one won't always be used on button number six it might be used on button number seven you see so we have to be flexible there just so you know which finger is which the index finger is number one 
the middle finger is number two, the ring finger is number three, and the little finger or the pinky is number four. And of course the thumbs aren't used because they're on top there. So how do you read this and play it? Well, you look for your first number, this one here, and it's, like I say, button two, it's on row number one, and it's gonna be on the pull and it's little finger. So it's gonna be this note here. Just play this note for you. And that's your first note of the tune. Let's find the next note. So we look, obviously look on both sides, left and right. There's nothing on the right hand side in this pickup bar. All these cells are empty. So let's find the next one down, it's here. It's button number three, it's in the button three column. So button three, so it counts up from the bottom, one, two, three. It's on row number one. It's on the push because there's no minus sign and it's finger number three. Just so happens that the button number uh, and the finger number are the same here, but they won't always be like that. And that note is on the push. Let's play that note for you. And then the last note in this pickup bar is the same button, okay, same row, but it's got a minus sign, so it's played on the pull. So same button I just played, but pulled out. So I'm gonna play those first three notes. And just so you get the timing right, it's one, two, three, and four, and. So as you count and four, and you play those three notes. Here we go. Okay, so I'll count in. One, two, three. And those are the notes in your pickup bar. So that's bar naught done. I'm sure you're beginning to get a good idea of it already. Here's bar number one. Still no notes on the right hand side. Like I said earlier, you've got this thick line and thin line and it says repeat here from second time through. So if you know anything about musical notation at all, you might know that a repeat sign looks like this, but up the other way, uh, the two dots face outwards. But obviously we're reading down the page, so I've had to turn it around. So just bear in mind, we're gonna come back to this point later on in the tune when we want to repeat. So now we've got bar number one, and we've got a complete bar of notes starting on beat number one. Now this number two, okay, is on button four, so it's left hand side still, button four, and it's finger number two, and it's on the push, and like I said earlier, unless you see a thick black box, a board around a cell, you know all the notes in this tune, it won't be in every tune, but in this tune, all those notes are gonna be on row number one, which is the row nearest to you. Just to recap, finger two, button four, push, that one there, and you can see that I've extended this, I've merged two cells together, so it's gonna last for beat one, and beat two, half of beat two, and then this note here is gonna come in on the end count. So it's gonna be like this. Now, the next note that we see is button number three, finger number three on the pull, and then button number four, finger number two on the push, and then button number five, finger number one on the pull. And then same button pushed. And then button number four, finger number two on the push. Now look at the counting over here. One, two, and three, and four, and. Remember the one, two, three, Four must be equidistant. You can't suddenly go one, two, three. So one, two, three, four. They can't move. So where we've got notes that don't fall on one, two, three, or four on the beat, if you like, we use this word and to get these kind of quicker notes. So the timing here is one, two, and three, and four, and. I'm going to play that whole bar for you now. Here we go. one, two, and three, and four, and. So let's go back to the top here, okay? And we'll play the pickup bar, bar number naught, and bar number one together. I'm gonna to count in with a three. Pull your bellows out before you start, so you've got plenty of air in them. Don't go too mad, don't pull them right out, something like that is fine. 
Notice I'm leaning the right cheek of my concertina on my right leg and the left side is free, but you can reverse that and do it on your left leg and have the right side free, whatever works for you. And out of shot here, I've got my right foot on a guitar stool so that my right leg is elevated. So I'm counting with a three. One, two, three. And that's our pickup bar and our first bar complete. At the end of each bar, you'll see this thick black line. Okay, there was a thick black line and a thin one here because this is a special uh, bar line for the repeat. I'm sure you're getting the idea by now. I'm not going to go through every single bar like this, but I'm sure you're, you're beginning to understand it. Let's do this next bar. So we've got button number three, finger number three on the pull on row number one. And then you've got the same button pushed. And then you've got this note. It's quite interesting. It's got a thick black box around it. So we know it's going to be on row two. That's the row that's not used as much as the other row. Okay. In fact, there's only a couple of notes played on this row in this tune. And it's finger number two, button number four on the push. So it's this note here. Okay. And then you've got this one again. Button number three, finger number three on the push. Button number four, finger number two on the push. And then the same button on the pull. And the counting here, one and two, three and four and. So this note here, the one that was played on row two, is held for the counts of two and three. And then this note comes in on the and count of three. So it's one and two, three and four and. So that will sound like this. One and two, three and four and. Right, let's move down to bar number three here. The first note of bar number three is button number five, finger number one on the push. No minor sign, so you know it's on the push and it's held for beat one, half of beat two, just like that note we just played on the other row and then it comes through in a very even way so the timing here is one and three and four and so don't forget to read down rows go across columns come down don't forget so as you come down the page, just play each note that you come to. And again, there's nothing on the right hand side. OK, let's do bar four. Scroll down to that. I would strongly suggest having this music printed out, by the way, uh, as well as watching it on the screen here. This is bar number four. And this note here is button three, finger three on the pull on row one, of course. And it's held for beats one, two and half of beat three before you go to this button number two, finger number four on the pull, and then back to button number three. So it's gonna be one, two, three, and four, and. That'll sound like this. Okay, one, two, three, and four, and. I'm gonna skip a few bars now. Normally, if this was a full-blown tutorial, I'd go through every single bar explaining every single note. But I'm going to skip a few bars here because I think you're getting the idea. Let's jump to page two. And you can see, as you come down to bar number eight, you actually finally get a note on the right-hand side. So let's explain bar number eight and bar number nine in full. So you start on button three, finger three, push, held for... Well, two and a half beats really, because it's the whole of beats one and two and half of beat three. And then you've got button number five, finger one, push, pull. And then finally, on the end count of four here, you play button number six. That's the first one down. It's on row number one on the pull. It's this note here. That'll be the last note of the bar. So the timing here is one, two, three, and four, and. Sounds like this. Okay, 
and that's your run up into your next section isn't it bar number nine it's all ones because you've got button six on the right hand side and button five on the left hand side and in this tune it won't always be the case but in this tune you use finger one for both those buttons so finger one on the right hand side finger one on the left hand side now the first note is button number six finger number one push and then you play the same button and pull and then do that again and then you go over to the left hand side and it's pull push pull on this button five that's going to sound like this do that again for you so that's basically it uh, let's look down the page if there's anything else to worry about here it's all very very straightforward go down each page this was page two let's jump to the final page page three and gets a little bit more complicated here because when you get to the end of bar 14 it says go to the second time ending second time well this is the first time so you'll go to the first time ending so in other words you'll do bar 14 and then you'll do bars 15 and 16 as your first time ending when you get to the end of bar 16 you can see that you've got that repeat sign going the other way thick line thin line and two dots and it says repeat from the start of bar one page one so we'll just look back there so you're going to go back from here from the beginning of bar one not the pickup bar and then the second time through like it said go to second time ending second time so assume you've done all that and we now have the second time ending and this is a little bit interesting because it's got only three beats in this bar so you're going to count it one and two and three and all equal value notes these notes are all quavers in case you're interested so bar 17 will sound like this one and two and three and now in bar 18 you've got this note here which is held for two beats and this note here which is held for two beats this is button five finger one pull this is button six finger one pull and then the final note of the tune is button six finger one push and you sustain this note for seven beats if i want you to sustain a note for a long while i often put this what I call the sustain arrow show you how long it lasts and it lasts up to the end of beat three in bar 20 so if I play the second time ending for you so here are bars 17 18 19 and 20 so that you can see how it all works Obviously this is a very straightforward piece but even the more complex pieces work very well. In the next few weeks I'm going to be putting up some more tutorials uh, so that you can see how this idea has been developed. I would just say this that the tablature is great and it shows you what to play and pretty much where and when to play it but always listen. Listen to me playing, listen to my performance. It's probably worth having uh, my separate performance video up alongside the tutorial. Uh, video so that you can quickly refer to my performance if you get stuck on a bit of timing because sometimes you may look at some counting and you might think well that's really complicated how does that go this is very much a watch listen and learn method by the way i printed my music out and i have trimmed it with a guillotine and i have taped it together so it makes a nice little sort of booklet like that so it doesn't sprawl all across the music stand or your table I never play off the computer, I always uh, play off the actual physical printed copy. Uh, I find it much easier, I'm sure you will as well. So here we are, Danny Boy or the Londonderry Air.